going to read to you part three from the story Elf Twinkle and her godmother. This is chapter 10. It continues after Tobias was placed next to godmother's body on the throne of ice. She was so astonished by it and half offended that the wizard and elf twinkle were laughing about the face of the godmother. And at some point she starts laughing. And then it's the moment when the ice bars around her break into pieces with a loud tinkling. And now it continues. Chapter 10, Mary Sounds in the Ice Cave. The bars around the throne of Godmother were now gone, and the ice pack around her body creaked due to the belly laughs. Twinkle allowed herself to slide down and climbed up the ice throne toward her Godmother. She got hold on the ice pack around the left arm of her godmother and pulled it away in one go. That's it, she said. Now you can stroke the hairy beast too. And she gave Tobias a kiss on his nose. Godmother gently moved her arm and while feeling slightly uncomfortable at first, she laid her hand on the back of Tobias and petted him. For the first time, the sound of a purring cat was audible in the ice cave. It seemed as if it suddenly became a bit warmer inside. The wizard picked up his backpack and pulled out some food. While they were eating nuts and pieces of apple, Twinkle told her godmother of the adventure with Tobias Thorn in his paw and the dangerous beast that turned out to be a loose branch. She told her of her dinner parties with a squirrel in Beach's Fortress pub and Godmother listened attentively while she petted Tobias. Can I visit you and see where you live? she asked, and Twinkle replied, Oh yes, of course, I live in the garden of the wizard, and he lives in the tower, all the way at the top. Is that really true? asked Godmother. While well, she looked at the wizard, can you touch the clouds? The wizard laughed and said, The tower isn't that high, but I've made a pair of binoculars. You can hold it one day and look through it. In the meantime, Twinkle brought tasty snacks to her godmother and put them in her mouth. The ice pack melted more and more, and it would not take long before godmother's bottom came loose from the throne. Chapter 11 Slide play. What's a binocular? asked Godmother while she cuddled Tobias closer to her. Oh, you can see things that are very far. I usually look at the moon or if I see a strange bird in the distance, I can have a good look at it, replied the wizard. And he explained how he had made his invention when he was working on making glass in the windows of his tower. Twinkle once climbed up along the ivy on the outside of the tower, and so we have met each other. Isn't it, Twinkle? he said. While he was looking for her. Twinkle, where are you? Twinkle was nowhere to be seen. Or, wait a minute. There, in one of the windows of an ice palace, the silver-haired head of Twinkle appeared and said, Cuckoo! And while her friends watched, she let herself slip from the ice palace stairs. She came sliding down fast and twirled around. Again there was a laugh out of Godmother's mouth. The ice harness around her legs broke loose, and she slid from her melting throne downward. With a little squeal, she slipped through the opening of the wizard's backpack, for the astonished eyes of the wizard 
And Tobias looked at her with round eyes. No, that, that wasn't a mouse, was it? Now the wizard roared with laughter, and Twinkle came closer, curious about what happened. The little mound in the backpack moved around and muffled sounds came out of it. Moments later, Godmother appeared and she shook the sand out of her hair. It smells like the forest in here. I smelled owls and pine cones, mushrooms and much more. Such a long time since. She sat down on her thawing bottom and held out her hand to Twinkle, which came down to sit next to her, happily surprised. Meow, meow now, sounded from above on the throne. Tobias was sitting upright and wanted to join them too. Fly down, Tobias, just like Godmother, said the wizard, and he kept his hands ready to catch him. Tobias stretched his legs in front of him, wriggled sideways with his body a few times, and under applause of five green little hands, the hairy beast slid down with a soft thud in the hands of the wizard. While they looked at him smiling, he sat down on his bottom and began to lick himself, looking a bit embarrassed, trying to look cool. Brrr, he didn't like the ice light play. Chapter 12 <clears throat> Departure from the Ice Cave Elf Twinkle looked happy at the wizard. They were now together and Godmother was almost completely defrosted. Would you like to go with us outside? she asked while she smoothed the silver hair of her godmother. You can easily live with us in the garden if you want to. Godmother looked around and sighed deeply. My beautiful ice palace and my music, I really want to, but not right now. Let me stay here for a while and I'll be going out to get used to the sunlight, was her answer. The wizard nodded and said, I understand. If you want to stay here for a while, do you agree with us visiting you again? Godmother wriggled her toes and looked at him gratefully. I would love that, and I want to thank you, all of you. I didn't think someone could be so kind to me. And again, it seemed to become a little warmer in the ice cave. The three visitors made themselves ready to leave. Tobias crept into the wizard's backpack. He had enough of walking with paws like ice clocks. Elf Twinkle pulled the knot out of the wizard's beard, hugged her godmother, and promised to come back soon. I'm going with you as far as the entrance of the tunnel, Godmother decided, and together with Twinkle she climbed on the shoulder of the wizard. With a warm stove on his back, he stepped through the opening of the ice cave, into the tunnel, and found the torches and the tinder box again. After lightening the torches, they began to find their way to the entrance, and this time a chitter-chitter started next to the wizard's ear. Tobias, who tried to sleep, grumbled and meowed, telling the two elves to be quiet. The wizard agreed with him, even though he didn't understood Tobias meowing, and he said, Please go sit on the other side, that's much better. And so the journey went largely in silence, apart from the sound of the wizard's boots. Godmother and Twinkle looked goggle-eyed at the ice curtains and the glint of light on the ice crystals. They crossed the frozen lake and safely passed the high space where the natural light of day came down through a crack in the rocks. The wizard placed the tinderbox near where the storage place was, but the burning torches they took with them for the final stretch to the entrance. Now they saw the roots of trees along the walls and the grey shimmer of boulders. At one time, the head of a mouse stuck out from a hole and looked at them with shining, beady eyes. Beep, it said, and fled quickly away in fright. Meow, it sounded sleepily from the backpack. Twinkle said, no way, and she saw the toy tail of the mouse disappear in the dark. 
Now they saw a light shining before them, and the stairs to the entrance appeared. We've arrived at the entrance, said the wizard. Please hold on tight. And with a few quick steps, he was up the stairs and outside. It was still light and a cold wind blew around their ears. The large ones of the wizard and the small ones of Twinkle and her godmother. Tobias was out of the wind, safe and warm in the backpack of the wizard. Chapter 13 After a long winter, springtime returns. The visit to Twinkle's godmother had created a lot of positive motion all over. After the departure of the visitors, godmother returned to the ice cave. The following days she went for ever longer periods of time outdoors, hiking in the winter world. The difference with her home in the hill was not that much at this time of the year, temperature-wise. When the sun was shining on the white world around her, she hid under the branches of pine trees, shadowing her eyes, and slowly but surely her eyes began to bear the light of day more. Also with her new friends, she made trips. The two lady elves teased Tobias by throwing snowflakes in his ears while he wore them on his back. The wizard brought dry leaves with him when he came to visit Godmother and red apples from his garden. Together they had long conversations and Godmother showed him how she made her ice palaces. The day of New Year, they celebrated all at Godmother's place and for the first time there were festive sparkles in the ice cave. They had been watching them with wide open eyes, reflecting the shooting stars. This was, of course, the work of the wizard. Only Tobias folded his legs over his head and refused to know and hear anything of it. The winter lasted long lasted longer, and even Godmother longed so much for the spring. January was over, February passed too, and then, finally, more and more green blades of the snowdrops appeared above the snow. The sun began to give more warmth, and Godmother was now almost all day outside. Slowly the white world began to melt, with the colors in nature returning, the brown earth the white sand, a bit of gentle green, the yellow suns of the gold's foot, and the soft purple of the violets that flower into the month of March. Godmother sat silently watching the variety of things the spring magically began to show up with. The birds started to sing and often she looked at them when in flight. She looked longingly. One morning, while she was warming up in the sun on the hill, she saw her new friends in the distance, running toward her. Good morning, she cried, while she stood up and waved. Good morning, came the response back from the hikers, while they started to climb the hill. What were they carrying with them? The wizard pulled a trolley behind him, while Tobias walked with Twinkle ahead. We invite you to share a picnic with us, to celebrate the spring, yelled Twinkle. She let herself slide off Tobias and gave her godmother a big hug. Tobias also wanted to join and gave them both a push with his head so that they fell over. They giggled while they lay together on their backs looking at the blue sky, where the birds were flying back and forth with straws in their beaks. There was the wizard also who put down his load with a sigh of relief and flopped down on the ground. Well, we've arrived, he said, and the friendly companions all sat and looked around in silence, looking at the fresh colors, sniffing the fresh air and the smells of springtime. They couldn't have chosen a better picnic area. The trolley was unloaded and all the goodies were displayed on the blanket, fresh eggs from the white chickens which the wizard kept in his garden, bread and cheese, honey cakes with nuts, raspberry juice and crystal water. The wizard took out a small package with fish tails and placed it near Tobias. 
cheerful they started on the festive meal. When they, when they had satisfied their tummies, Twinkle hid in an empty eggshell and acted as if she was a little girl, bird that crawled out of the egg. Godmother crawled into a hole of the cheese and squeaked like a mouse. The wizard threw nuts in the air and caught them in his mouth. And Tobias? Tobias was happy asleep in the sun. When they had eaten and their tummies were round, their bodies growing tired of all the laughter, they joined Tobias and on the hill only the singing of birds was heard. Godmother dreamed of the bird's nest where she lived as a child, high in the tree. She dreamed of the first time she stood on the edge of the nest and flew into the blue sky. She woke up with a smile and felt as if she was again standing ready on the edge of the nest. She noticed that the others were still sleeping, walked softly to a stone and climbed on top. Something was tickling on her back. It seemed as if a remnant of a layer of ice was melting. With a fast beating heart, she stood there and felt a desire that she had forgotten for a long time. Slowly something unfolded behind her back, and when she understood, she took a deep breath, looked at the blue sky, and there she went. Godmother flew, first a little uncomfortable, but soon it went higher, and she saw the others as little specks of color below her, and the entire green hill. It was delicious. She went into a nosedive and hung with trembling wings just above the head of her godchild. She pulled Twinkle's nose softly, flew to Tobias and pulled his ear. Twinkle opened her eyes and immediately sat straight up. Godmother, you are a twelve, she cried in surprise, and she looked with admiration at the beautiful transparent wings. Oh, Twinkle, I'm so happy, cried Godmother and she proudly flew a circle around the hilltop. Twinkle noticed that the wizard was still sleeping, and she pulled his beard. Wake up! Godmother is a twelve! <coughs> <coughs> she yelled in his ear. The wizard woke up with a start and looked around him in amazement. Huh? What's up? He mumbled sleepily, and then he saw the twelve. Well, I say, was the only thing he could utter, and he followed the little being on wings with his eyes. I've got my wings back again, cried Godmother happily, as she made a nice glide flight right in front of him. A pair of blue and two pairs of green eyes looked admiringly at Godmother, who now landed on a stone. The wings of the twelve trembled and shimmered in the springtime sun. Godmother's eyes shone and she said, Thank you so much for this unforgettable day. Now I know that I won't have to be afraid for the sun anymore. And today I'll go with you, to live with you if that's what you still wish for. The shining eyes looking at her were the answer to her question. And in this manner, Godmother departed with her new friends towards her new home, the garden of the wizard, where the springtime delivered new life with colors, forms, birdsong, and mild days after a long, long winter. End of story. <laughs>